is The Chris Abraham Show. Yay! <laughs> Hi, this is Chris Abraham. This is The Chris Abraham Show. Season 4, episode 13, Lucky 13. This episode is about slow and steady winning the race. And I realize that my health gets better as I commit to doing uh, a little bit fewer steps every day than if I make my workout completely lumpy and, you know, take one day off and then do one day where I do, you know, well over 10,000 steps, you know, three, four, five miles. And this is the result of tracking things on both Fitbit and Garmin. Uh, It seems to me that if I go ahead and walk a little bit every day and get, you know, what's considered wimpy, wimpy numbers, such as six, seven, eight, thousand steps instead of, you know, some of my friends who do 25, 30,000 steps a day, but I do them every day religiously and drink way more water than I think I should drink. And I'll talk about that in a second. Then my health gets better. My resting heart rate goes down. My body batteries go up. My, um, my heart rhythm stays more consistent. Uh, my my uh, heart rate variability uh, gets higher, which is better. And uh, I'm generally in a better place of mind and so forth. So this is what I'm conveying to you today. I will um, talk about what this means for me after the break. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. My name's Chris Abraham. This is Lucky 13, Season 4, Episode 13 of The Chris Abraham Show. I'm Chris Abraham, in case you forgot after my saying it just seconds ago. And I was, I met with my, my, uh, with my cardiologist yesterday, and he was very happy with my progress. And now we're entering into the world of radical weight loss. And so, as you might know from my episode yesterday, uh, he recommends that I do something radical, which is to remove everything out of my diet except uh, fat and meat. So for the next three months, we're going to go for a strict um, carnivore diet, which really is only, you know, because you want to get as much fat as possible, it's a fat maximalist diet, it is going to be relatively low on chicken and fish and much higher on, uh, on, on red meat and other types of, uh, of fatty meat. And for me, because I am not rich, it's going to rely a lot on things like, oh, it includes eggs and eggs are the perfect macro for this diet. So basically what I'm going to be eating a lot of is uh, fry-ups of eggs, butter, and 85%, uh, percent, um, 80, uh, 80-70, or 85-65 um, ground beef. And it's not going to include mayonnaise, it's not going to include uh, ketchup or barbecue sauce, no. It's just going to be butter, salt, and pepper. And all I'm going to drink, which is what all I ever drink anyway, is black coffee and water and tea. Um, but not sweet tea, uh, black tea. Um, and possibly, if I need it, maybe some element element uh, additive to water to get the electrolytes. But that is neither here nor there. After the break, I'll tell you about the um, the main focus of this uh, of this episode, which is 
slow and steady wins the race because my cardiologist and I came up with a plan. And this plan reflects the success of my last few months in terms of just my general health. And I'll talk to you in a second. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I swear to God, I'm going to get over that at some point, I promise. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember Welcome Back, Cotter. Uh, Anyway, maybe I can get the song off of Spotify and put it in here. Let me see if I can do that. Be right back. Hydration, hydration, hydration. I'm uh, using a uh, an app on my phone called Simple. I think it's that's what it's called, and it is I think Ukrainian or Russian intermittent fasting app. And it blows my mind. It it took my weight, which is 340 pounds, and my height, which is six foot three, and it said, Chris, you have a lot of of mass. So, as a result, you need to drink 150 ounces of water a day. Hey, Google, how many gallons is 150 ounces? 150 fluid ounces is 1.172 liquid gallons. To convert from fluid ounces to liquid gallons, divide units of volume by 128. So, I am told that I need to drink a gallon of water every day in order to keep up my hydration of my big ass body. I think that someone who maybe weighs um, 150 to 180 pounds maybe only needs to drink 64 ounces or less liquid a day. Luckily, a simple interprets coffee as partial water benefit, uh, but it really is a full-time job to get a hundred and fifty to get to get a gallon of water down every single day forever. So I really want you to know that you should reassess what your personal water requirements are. And if you're morbidly obese like I am, you need to drink water accordingly. Otherwise, you're going to be in a constant state of dehydration. And I think that if I just drink a normal amount of water a day, I believe that one of the things that makes me feel hungry, one of the things that makes me feel uh, that kind of, um, I don't know, that kind of, I guess, nausea, that makes me feel like I'm hungry or or something, like that little bit of ick that makes me want to eat is actually a craving for hydration. So please make sure that you reassess how much you need to drink. I don't know if you've realized it, but all the super fit people around you uh, carry around either a disposable gallon jug of water that they, you know, Deer Park that they get from the grocery store, and, or other people have full-on gallon jugs of water uh, that they uh, schlep around with them uh, that have, you know, certain times of day written on the side to make sure that they guarantee uh, drink the amount of water that they need to, which is up to and above one gallon, not eight cups. Hey, Google, how many cups are there in a gallon? Hey, Google, how many cups are there in a gallon? One liquid gallon is 16 cups. So, the double of what people are telling you. They say to you, I don't know, this might be eight cups for someone who's 150 pounds, 120 pounds. But I am 340 pounds. And so, as a result, according to Simple, I require one gallon of water every day. I don't know how you figure it out for your weight. Uh, It might probably be a very simple, um, hey, Google, how do you calculate how much water you need to drink a day based on body weight? Here's a summary from the website goodhousekeeping.com. How much water should you drink based on your weight? Here's how to calculate it. One, 
Take your weight and divide that by 2.2. 2. Multiply that number depending on your age. If you're younger than 30, multiply by 40. 3. Divide that sum by 28.3. And 4. Your total is how many ounces of water you should drink each day. I also found an answer to this question. How much water should I drink a day by weight calculator? Do you want to hear it? Yes. On the website slenderkitchen.com, they say, for example, if you weighed 175 pounds you would multiply that by two thirds and learn you should be drinking about 117 ounces of water every day. Thank you. Happy to help. All right. Well, I added this little segment after I started listening to my latest episode, episode 13, um, because I realized I'd mentioned that I would add it, and then I didn't, and so I'm adding it now, and I'll figure out where to put it. Mahalo, ciao, and I guess there'll be a segment after this. All right, I've been I've been preaching this for a long time. In fact, I'm the mod of Reddit slash r slash slow jogging, slow slow jogging, and um, I've been a proponent of slow and steady wins the race forever. In fact, I also started slow rowing, which hasn't gone anywhere on Reddit. But I've been remotivated by my. Uh, my cardiologist. I haven't been on the treadmill or the bike or the concept two all summer because I think that I owe it to myself to do all of my slow walking outside, you know, where I can get vitamin D and I can meet people and I can not be isolated. But as the weather starts to turn cold, it is going to be more and more attractive to get on the concept two. But yesterday, I was talking with uh, with my cardiologist, Dr. Lux, who is awesome, by the way, and he is the best doctor I've ever had. He spent, it felt like forever, chatting with me about uh, the carnivore diet and about, um, in many ways, is a uh, an adapted mafetone uh, heart rate training. <clears throat> but this one, and it's what... Uh, what this um, book on on uh, Amazon, which I'm getting a hardcover of, which is basically called Slow Rowing. And it's how to, you know, basically what they say is they say, get on the rowing machine and just treat it like you are doing Tai Chi. But if you do it for an hour, do it for an hour every day, not rigorous, not vigorous, but uh, do it in a way that uh, allows your blood to flow. Do it for a, in a way that, that encourages you to have a strong breath. Do it in such a way that you um, bring blood flow to all of your muscles and limbs. Do it in a way that, if you will, um, makes your body distribute that blood across your body. Do it in such a way that it lubricates your joints and keeps, uh, and, and in the case of the rowing machine, allows your legs and your arms and your body to have a full range of motion. Uh, he says that like in a sort of an accordion, uh, you will uh, blow out the bad stuff, bring in the good stuff, blow out the bad stuff, bring in the good stuff. You will oxygenate for an hour uh, every day. You will encourage blood flow. It will also aid with digestion. It will keep your entire body humming. The same thing with, you know, a lot less range of motion can happen. Slow jogging can happen, even slow walking, depending on how heavy you are or how many hours you do it. Like I said in a previous episode, all the power lifters and all of the uh, professional eaters that I see on YouTube, uh, they they bonk out at the gym. They're all jacked. And when it comes to cutting, which is to say uh, cutting is when you uh, try to reduce your body fat to the point where all of your musculature 
is revealed. You know, it's called uh, being cut for a reason. And cutting requires uh, that you remove as much body fat as possible. And the way they do it, they generally are not runners or joggers. You will see um, power lifters take obsessive amounts of walks. They will walk for two, three, four hours a day. And that's because they realize that there's a they're not into cardio. When they tell you they're not into cardio, the next thing you do to a power lifter or a bodybuilder or a weight lifter is ask them, but how many hours a day do you spend walking around? Um, or on the treadmill walking or whatnot. Because I dare say that um, the reason why everybody but Randy, uh, Centel is his name, Everybody but Randy Centel uh, in competitive eating on YouTube are like completely v- cut with complete vascularization, skinny mini people. And I think that's because not only do they never eat or eat very limited diets of very bulky, uh, watery foods like giant salads when they're not eating uh, the junk food that makes up their shows... Uh, they're also staying extremely well hydrated, but they're spending so much time just walking about. So if you, you know, go to my website, chrisabraham.com and search the word slow, you'll see that I've done lots of articles on the Maffetone method, on the book about slow rowing, on the book about slow jogging. And this has been my passion forever, but I've been really... I don't know, I've just been focusing on walking and rucking. I got myself a brand new 26 liter uh, Huckby, Huckberry, Huckberry uh, Coyote Brown 26 liter GR1 Go Ruck Bag, and I think I'm in love. Uh, so until, this, until the season cha- seasons change, I'm committed to walking and rucking. But afterwards, and, and actually starting tonight at, uh, at 6 p.m., I will dedicate myself, I hereby pledge that I will dedicate myself to farting around on the rowing machine for an hour every evening. Uh, And I think you too should too. And I think that when I thought of this article, when I thought of this blog post, when I thought of this podcast episode, I thought to myself, I wrote down in my journal, I wrote, um, slow and steady wins the race. And what I meant by that is I actually wrote, um, smooth is always better than lumpy when it comes to athleticism. So I think it's better to do an easy one hour every day for the rest of your life than to be a weekend warrior. I think that being a weekend warrior results in people stroking out and having heart attacks and so forth. Because even though you might have the muscle memory and the strength and the fierceness to go ahead and and run a a 20 minute 5k i think with seth 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 james damore is that his name uh always says who's my favorite running he's like five foot three and a half hundred ten pounds but he always says it's that building your base building your base long runs i mean Long, slow runs to him are still, you know, eight-minute miles. And for me, it's 13 to 16-minute miles. But everything's relative, right? He says that the thing that you need to do is always build your foundation, build your base. And if everybody's just trying to make personal records, like I think Kafuzi is someone who uh, can't handle going slow and easy forever, He's another YouTuber, K-O-F-U-Z-I, Kofuzi. And he's the kind of guy who needs to, like, he needs to do uh, tempo work. He needs to do, he needs to set up his watch so that he does slow stuff, but he breaks it up with power 10s and power 20s. And that's what I plan to do, but I always, I plan to do low and slows. So out of my entire hour every day, I I plan to do at least three or four, maybe five power tens and power twenties. 
What that means is that I'll be doing a very slow, relaxed 128, 120 beats per minute row while watching a movie or watching a series or binging or watching a documentary or listening to an audiobook. And then periodically I will, I will, um, I will do what I did when I was a rower in college. Um, I will say in my head or I will say out loud what the coxswain used to say, which is up one, up two, which is, you know, uh, signal that you're about to do a power 10 or power 20. Up one, up two, one, two, three, four, five. And I'll do that in my head. And I'll do that, uh, I think it's power 20. I think I'll try to do a really hard 20. And then come down from that maybe for 10 more minutes and then do another power 20. Um, it's not that, not that much of a work. But it, 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 I think the diversity and uh, kind of mixing it up a little bit isn't bad. And it doesn't break from the general theory of slow rowing or slow jogging. If I were slow jogging, I don't know if I would necessarily do the power 20s. But, you know, it's so easy to do so, right? If you uh, end up on a long pathway or, or, or even doing um, hill sprints or hill, uh, hill add hills to your uh, slow jog, that, that's um, extremely hard to do. Up, up hills, even slow jogging, are way more require way more energy and uh, affect your um, your heart rate much more than than do flatlands. Oh, also, do not do any of your power 20s uh, at the end of your row. Like, I think it's really important to allow your intense 20 pulls or 20 seconds of sprinting, allow those to normalize back to really comfortable rowing. So I recommend not doing, I recommend doing your last power 20. If you decide to do one, do them. Uh, don't do it after 10 minutes after like do them all before your final 10 minutes of rowing. Um, other than that, I, I think I will try to post links to the various, I, I'll post links to all of the, uh, articles that I've written about slow jogging and so forth and put them in the description. Uh, but that'll take a second because I can't really do it via this app. Uh, so I will have to bring out the laptop and do that afterwards. So they're pretty good at of updating all that stuff to all the other sites. But um, maybe what I'll do is just put this on draft and then post it. No, I'll do it. I'll do it uh, the right way or the wrong way. Uh, and then update the links in a second after I post it. But nobody listens to these anyway, so it won't be a big deal. Like It's not like you're listening to this on stream. Love you guys. Take care. Good luck. I will be back with um, the details about who I am and how to contact me. But I might steal that from a previous episode. I might go ahead. Nah, I'll do it again normally. Uh, you deserve... Uh, fresh meat every time. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.